Hello everyone, welcome back to Mnix Plays Path of Exile Legion League. Uh, this episode's gonna be a real quick episode actually. Uh, it's gonna be an end of league summary. As you can see, my character has now gone down to the standard league. Um, I ended up with a character at level 92. I actually couldn't level further because I was dying. Oh, well, I wasn't dying too much. I was trying to push a lot more of the end game content and as a result I ended up dying um, but overall in maps I think this character it's probably one of my most successful characters to date um, overall uh, as a champion it felt really tanky um, even though I didn't have that much armor and evasion uh, I had fortify you have all kinds of like little buffs you get increased armor when you have fortify you get increased armor when you have impale um, you got to taunt, which meant 6% reduced damage, and because I kept using Enduring Cry, we had a lot of physical reduction as well. The only annoying thing was that we had to maintain our endurance charges. Uh, the taunt gave us a lot of good DPS because taunted enemies cannot evade attacks, so both myself as well as my minions got 100% accuracy, which is insane. I thought that is the best part about being a champion overall. Um, I'm a little sad I couldn't get Intimidate and Adrenaline, but with Dominating Blow, it doesn't really make sense because uh, you don't necessarily hit enemies that are on full life right away. Sometimes your minions charge into the battle and, you know, uh, and, and they get the first hit. So it doesn't necessarily always work. Uh, overall, our character had 5,800 HP. I we could have gotten more, I think, uh, if we had optimized our build a little better. Like, I have mana flows in here because I had stat issues, so I needed mana. Um, mana was always a concern. I think towards the end, if I didn't have mana leech on my tree, um, I was having trouble maintaining Dominating Blow because it just cost so much mana. It's 37 mana per hit. We hit with an attack time of 0.16 seconds, and we only have 115 mana. So, um, that... I, I think I could have figured it out, but I was like, you know what, it's working for the most part, so I didn't really bother too much with it. But maybe I could have gotten rid of the skill effect duration notes. I actually don't think it was doing too much because we were resummoning minions at such a fast rate. Um, and, uh, and maybe we could have gotten, you know, either a bit more mana, maybe a bit more life. Uh, hitting 6,000 might have been pretty cool. I still had, you know, a few more levels. I was. I was gonna get a jewel socket right there, uh, but for the most part, I would say this build is complete. In terms of the items that I had, I went a little Mimi, I think. Uh, I do have the double scourges. Um, they were really nice in terms of uh, damage, and they also gave attack speed. Minions have increased attack speed, which means I have increased attack speed, so these claws were actually 20% increased attack speed. Um, and then 70% increased minion damage on both these claws, 140% increased damage. Um, yeah, it's a lot of damage actually. I think we, if you use, uh, I think you can meta craft a pretty decent minion claw these days, especially with the incursion minion mods, but it's expensive, right? The bone helm, obviously, I could have done with a better enchantment, but. I thought this bone helm was pretty good, you know, life, intelligence, which I really needed actually, cold resistance, it pretty much had everything I needed. It, it would have been nice if I could have uh, fossil enchanted, uh, physical, physical damage, what was it, basically in increased physical damage to anything nearby, it would have acted like a mini, do I even have it? like a mini flesh and flesh and blood flesh and stone i forget what the gem was called flesh and stone um you know in the flesh or in the in the physical damage or uh uh or blood stance but i didn't get it so you know what i didn't want to spend further money on it the gloves i got a long long time ago actually i double enchanted it in the temple I don't remember. I don't know if you guys actually remember. It has double resistances, life, some damage, um, and then the double enchant had 
plus two duration gems and six percent life i thought you know what that's good enough i don't think i'm ever gonna get anything better than that so i just kept it around so uh the blasphemy on vulnerability is there so it gets plus two levels from that convocations there the plus two levels i don't think it mattered there the dread banner plus two level i think it actually matters a lot uh, so that helped a lot. Impale is an insane mechanic, and they didn't nerf it for next league, which, uh, like, I think this build is gonna be really, really good next league. If you looked at the patch notes, if you ever decide to play this build, I think next league would be the place uh, would be the time to play it. Uh, the big buffs are that Herald of Purity, as well as the Dominating Blow Sentinels, have the the Crusader Slam by default, whereas normally you would need to get it from the Templar Ascendancy, um, you now get it by default. So AoE is not going to be a problem, I don't think, next league. And you're going to, with, and it, it makes running Herald of Purity such, so much better, actually. Um, they also added the Carrion Golem, which gives increased physical damage to your minions, which means that physical damage gets added on to Impale. Uh, I don't know whether it's worth running a Necromancer because that physical damage with Impale synergizes so well, actually. So, I would actually go for Impale again, like running a champion. I, I don't know which one's better, Necromancer or Champion for the Falling League. Um, but yeah, the, the Golem buff, the, the huge, huge Sentinel buff. That's like a straight buff to Dominating Blow and Herald of Purity. I wish I had, I, I, I'm, I'm, I could play it in Blight League, but you know, I kind of want to try another build. I, I feel like it'll be really, really good. Defensively, I think this build could do better because uh, towards the end, I was getting you know, one-shotted by things here and there. I think the big problem was my choice of my chest armor. I went to I went for the Dendro bait because I'm like, yeah, I already have Impale. Let's add some more stuff. Why not? Like, I also have vulnerability. That means there's chance to bleed. Let's also add chance to poison. You know, give it a seventh link, lesser poison. It'll be insane. But the crazy thing was, you know, I had to try and basically off color it which was i was trying to get five reds which was so hard and it's, i ended up settling for four and then you know i, I think it would have been better if you just got like a um, a fossil crafted chest with you know plus one maim and then get some armor and get some life uh, there, there isn't even any life on this chest armor. So I think I could have done a lot better with the chest armor. But towards the end, I'm like, you know what? Forget it. This is good enough for me. And presence actually helped a lot with the vulnerability. I don't know if it's necessarily the best, best amulet, but you know, I liked it. Um, the rings just life resistances, life resistances, some melee damage, life. Uh, if I could have gotten minion damage anywhere else, I would have, you know, obviously gone for that. Uh, the gems, obviously, or jewels, obviously you go for minion damage. Um, I think, you know, specifically you want to go for the jewels that have increased minion damage if you use a minion skill recently. Because that has like the best, best amount. Physical damage obviously works really well with Impale. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, going into some maps real quick, I can kind of... You know, we, we've kind of seen it at this point. So, um, Jimmy and I, we managed to defeat the Shaper off stream. Uh, so you can kind of see, you know, it's it's pretty tanky. I don't really use my flask that well. Uh, I don't really remember to do it. I'm using a Rumi's Concoction just for a little bit more defensiveness. Uh, it gives me some armor and it gives me some, uh, you know, like block as well as spell block. Which, you know, I thought it's, it's pretty good. Once you get your army going, you know, you kind of just whirl through everything and your minions probably take care of everything. I think this build really shines with single target because you can kind of run around in circles when you fight. Um, and then you only need to summon these minions every now and then. Now, I don't have a writhing jar, uh, so it's kind of hard to sustain the minions while I'm fighting bosses. Uh, it's a little bit better when I'm running Herald of Purity versus Flesh and Stone. 
typically I run Flesh and Stone if I want a little bit more survivability because 10% or blinding any, everybody nearby and then taking 10% reduced damage is insane. Now, Flesh and Stone got nerfed a little bit for next league, so I think it might be better to run Herald of Purity. And additionally, Dominating Blow got buffed so that instead of 10% chance to... Wait, what's going on? 10% chance to spawn uh, a Sentinel when you hit a unique monster is 25% chance. So it's actually a lot better, like so much better. So I, I don't think you're going to have any trouble sustaining uh, your minions in against big bosses. So really you just focus on you know getting your defenses up. You know obviously if you drop flesh and stone you're going to lose you know, a lot of defense. So, you know, make sure you have decent life. Uh, but I, I feel like this build could be really, really good next week. Um, it, it, it kind of fits. I don't know if it fits the meta. I don't think that many... Well, obviously it doesn't. Not many people were playing Dominating Blow. But, you know, with the AoE changes and all the buffs to minions, um, I feel like now's the time to play dominate, Dominating Blow. But yeah, overall, like this build, it basically ran everything I wanted it to run. I guess the exception would be the Legion stuff because I just didn't have enough AoE. Um, also, the minions weren't necessarily aggressive enough. <clears throat> they had a very short leash range. So, you know, if I'm standing over here, they're not going to run to the corners to, to chase things down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now... With the new support gem coming out, once again, the new support gem that makes your uh, your minions more aggressive. I don't know how it's going to interact with Dominating Blow, but I feel like it could work really well because, you know, these guys attack very fast, they move quite fast, and they hit really hard. And there's a lot of them. So... You know, I, I feel like if they had a little bit more leash range and a little bit more AoE, like those were the two things that I was looking out of this build. Like the things I could criticize about this build, if it had a little bit more AoE, it would be great. If it had a little bit more leash range, it's awesome because the damage is insane. Um, the defense is pretty good as a summoner. Like, you're a lot less squishy than the traditional summoner. Maybe not more tanky than... Uh, Necromancer? Like, Necromancers are pretty tanky, actually. Uh, and I actually think if you use Necros, you can probably get more defense. You just lose Impale, which is a lot of damage. So, you know, you would have to go on POB to figure out which one's better. But the Necro buffs, as well as minion buffs in general, really, really took um, this build to the next level. You know, I actually think it rate went up a tier. I think, you know, this dominating build blow was kind of meme like B minus C plus tier. Um, I think this can take it up to like a like an A tier. Uh, that's my guess for next league. I don't know if I will be playing it, but if someone decides to play this build the following league, let me know how it goes. I'm really curious. Um, this build was probably one of my favorites actually i have to say this is this is my favorite build that i played uh for a long time and i'm a little sad that i have to let this character go and i'm a little sad i couldn't show you know uh uber elder and shaper on you know on stream uh uber elder we tried and we got like two shot it shaper we actually did as you can see on the atlas um i didn't stream it we managed to get it down to 10 percent, and then jimmy called it it was it was a very mechanical fight and it was a pretty difficult fight. It was it took us a lot of tries, like six or seven different tries. So, you know, it, I couldn't consistently do it. I think I I would have needed more practice and more damage. Like the minions were being a little dumb. That was the biggest problem. So once again, if I had that longer leash range, I think there was a support gem that makes them more aggressive. I would totally go for that. Having that extra leash range and the extra AOE. Um, and the ability to summon them, summon them more reliably, 25% versus 10%, that's that's 200% or 100 150% increased chance. Um, 
you know, like 10 to 25. That's that's a big increase. I think it's going to be really, really good for this build. But as a as a summary to this league, I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, I'm really looking forward to Blight League. Uh, just a heads up, on Friday, I will be doing a live stream of the league. Uh starting from when league starts so if you're interested drop by twitch.tv slash mnixplays i don't stream very often but i am i'm so excited about the release of the new league that i'm gonna i'm gonna get right into it i want to get into it um i'm gonna be playing a different build probably not this one i haven't decided which one i have i've been reading the patch notes there have been some on my mind but I might play some kind of leveling build because I'm not smart enough to build my own. Um, I played this one because I felt like it would have been successful and I'm glad that it was, you know, it was nice. And honestly, my guy looks top notch as well. So I'm really excited uh, for the next league. I'm really happy about this build. Uh, you know, in terms of the rating I would give it, you know, like... Hello. Like, uh, like in taunt, enduring cry over ten. Like, it was, no, I en I enjoyed it, and uh, I would do it again. I really would. Um, it's just I feel like it would be a little bit repetitive to do it, the league right after. Even though I feel like it is the perfect league to do it, um, and the leveling process was pretty okay. The moment you got dominating blow, things just started clicking. So, uh, Overall, I would recommend this build, and I don't think the items are too expensive overall. Everything was pretty cheap, with the exception of a 6th link, but, you know, that's that's every build. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this league. I really did, and I'm looking forward to next one. So, I will see you guys in the Blight League. See you next time. Bye.